Good morning, Stampers. Happy Friday. Welcome to this week's live where I will be playing with the Share a Milkshake bundle and some masking paper to share a fun ready form technique with you. All right, I'm just updating my computer here. Hopefully I'll be able to see your comments. Make sure that you say hi as you join in. Let me know where you're watching from. All right. Okay, before we get started, I wanted to announce the winners of the previous Facebook Lives, the last couple Facebook Lives that I've done. So whenever I create a card, I will draw a name from anybody who's commented or shared my live and that lucky winner will get whatever I made that day. And I usually only do this when I do cards. 3D projects and scrapbook layouts are a little bit more tricky to nail. So um, towards the beginning of January, I created these three cards using the adorable owls stamp set so cute these are also the three card kits that you'll get if you shop with me in january using the monthly host code which i believe i have linked below um so let's see here denise valet is the lucky winner of this card uh gail bueller is the winner of this card and lisa coppins is the winner of this one so congratulations ladies I will pop those in the mail for you. And then last Friday, I created this fun easel calendar card featuring the uh, Queen Bee bundle, which just a reminder, today is the last day to register for the Queen Bee class to go. Um, and you can find all the details on my blog. I believe I have it linked in the description. All right, and then there's the back, and Sarah Lynn Minkin is the winner of this card, so I will pop that in the mail for her as well. All right, now, Reese, oh, one more thing before we get into today's project. Um, Stampin' Up! announced a little peek at next month's Paper Pumpkin Kit, which is called Sunshine and Smiles, and it looks super cute. There's an adorable little frog and some floral images. And they have, for the first time ever, a dye add-on. And um, it's $8.25, and I believe you get two of these dyes here. So one of each of these dyes for $8.25. So if you are a Paper Pumpkin subscriber and you are signed up for next month's kit, then you might want to consider adding on those dyes. And they coordinate with the uh, Rain or Shine Suite, I believe that's what it's called. Yeah, Rain or Shine Suite from the mini catalog. So I love that they did that because there's some really cute critters in there and the DSP is so fun. Um, so they've got that, the two kits that coordinate, so they'll work really well together. All right, so I wanted to point that out. You can sign up for this paper pumpkin kit until February 10th. Um, and then that'll be it. Then like, that option won't be available. All right. Okay. So let's slide this aside here. All right. So I recently held a class, a technique class, which I haven't done in a long time. I don't do technique classes very often. I used to. I don't know why I don't do them more often. But um, I did a technique class using masking paper and the share a milkshake bundle from the January to April mini catalog. And it was so fun. The cards we created are super cute. Each card features kind of a different way to use masking paper. So those are the four cards. Um, so the class is finished, obviously. However, you can purchase the tutorial. I have linked it in the description. So if that's something that you're interested in, and I do have one extra class kit. If anybody in Canada is interested in that, just reach out and let me know and I'd be happy to um, send that to you. All right. Okay, I just remembered I forgot to grab something. I will be right back. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so like I said, 
we're gonna do a masking paper technique. Now you can see I've used a ton of masking paper. I'm almost done my package, just little scraps left. So our masking paper comes in a five by seven sheet. And what I've done is I've cut a bunch of narrow strips lengthwise. Okay, so these are quarter inch strips and I cut several of them. And we're gonna create kind of like a little pattern. Sorry, I'm just get my computer fixed up here. All right. Okay. All right. So I've got a piece of white cardstock, and this has a backing on it. And it's called masking paper because it's like, it's almost like um, a temporary adhesive or a post-it adhesive and we're going to create kind of a little pattern so i've got a scrap piece of paper underneath and we're just going to and you can get fun with it so we're going to do And I can trim this because it's a little long and I might be able to use that little bit. So let's use this bit up here. Okay, we'll peel back some more. This is probably the trickiest part of the whole thing is just getting that backing off. All right, so let's do one going like this and I like to extend it off of the cardstock so that it serves the purpose of holding my cardstock in place as well and let's see try to not make it so straight okay that looks good so we've got it covered the way we want it and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, actually we're gonna start with the lighter color. We're gonna, color combination today is Petal Pink and Sweet Sorbet, which are two colors I probably, I wouldn't necessarily have put together, but they look, they work really, really well together. So we're gonna use Petal Pink first, and even though we have masking paper already on here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some ink blending to some of these areas, but I do want to mask off the other ones because I don't want um, ink to get the wrong color ink to get on there. So I'm just going to take some post-it notes and because I want this one to be petal pink and I want this one to be petal pink. And okay, let's start with that. Oh, we got to mask off this one. I don't want this one to be petal pink. So this will just make it so that I don't have to be so careful when I'm doing my ink blending. Okay, so I'll tap off my brush and then just with a light hand, I'll add my ink blending. You can make it as dark as you want it. So add as many layers of ink as you want. So this does take a little bit of a a little bit of time. I designed this card when I was playing around and creating, designing the class. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but this technique took a little bit too long for an in-person class. So I decided to use it for a video for you guys instead. So now I'm taking the hearts from that share milkshake class and I'm just stamping a few of those in there. Okay, now we can move our post-it notes. So this is the next one that I wanna do. So I'm just gonna change positions here. And I think I'm gonna move this one down this way so that I just get this area inked up. Okay. 
Good morning, Layla. All right. Yes, this is a fun, this technique is called ready form and it creates kind of some different blocks of color. It's kind of fun. It does take a little bit of time, but I mean, if you're making a card for someone special, this would definitely be a fun technique to use. Let's do one more layer of this. And then we'll add our hearts. Let's do one more here. Okay, and then we've got one more block of petal pink to do. We'll do that right here. I don't need to necessarily worry about this little spot here where it overlaps because I'm using the same color. Hello, Maureen from Newfoundland. Welcome. We're doing a fun ready form technique using the share a milkshake bundle and some masking paper. Now, one of the things that we found in class on Saturday when we were playing with our masking paper is that some of the batches of masking paper are a little sticky. So you don't want to push them down too hard onto your cardstock and you want to be very, very careful when you lift them up. And you'll see what I do when I go and lift my masking paper up. Okay, so now we're done with the petal pink. Just close this up. Now we're going to move on to the sweet sorbet. And we're just going to basically repeat that same process. So I'm going to take my post-it notes and just move them around. And we'll start with this area. We'll grab a separate blending brush. Whoa, that is really strong or really dark. Let's use a very light hand with this one. Not gonna you need to add too many layers of this color. Okay, and then we're gonna take the cherry, and this time we're gonna stamp the cherry on here. Now with these smaller images, you will have the best success by using a really light hand. So just tapping it on your ink pad and gently adding the stamp to your project. If you, if you push too hard on your ink pad, you get ink all around the edges and sometimes that'll distort your image. So you really want to use a really light hand. Okay, let's work on this guy right here. Cover this up. This one, and I don't even know if we need to re-ink this. Let's just keep adding color. Okay, and then we'll do our cherry. Uh-oh. Let's see, thankfully this is photopolymer. I should be able to line it up pretty closely. There we go. And I'm trying to do my cherry so that they're kind of in different directions. For the hearts, I kind of wanted them to go all in the same direction. Oh my gosh. I need to be a little bit more careful with my st stamping of my cherries here. Okay, one more area. So again, I don't need to cover this area because it's the same color that I'm blending over top of. 
wait till you see when we remove the masking paper, the fun pattern that it creates. All right, that should be good. Let's close this up. We'll get rid of these post-its. Oh, look, see the masking paper came off on that one. And look at that. Gives you a fun little white border and some distinction between the different colors. Now let's, let's do this one first. Okay, so when you peel it back, you want to be very careful. So I like to peel it back at quite a severe angle. Okay, so not like this, but like this and go slowly because you want to make sure that it doesn't tear your cardstock. And look at that fun. Isn't that cool? Love how this looks. Sometimes you'll find that the, the masking paper will start to tear and leave a little bit behind, you know, kind of like when you remove a sticker off of something, it leaves little bits. So then just go and peel it from the other side. So here you can kind of see that it's, it's starting to tear just a little bit. So I'm just going to come in from the other side and just remove it that way. All right, and then let's do this log one. It also helps sometimes if you want, if you're using a big piece of masking paper, if you just kind of de-stick it a little bit. So, um, Maybe just put it on your pants just to get some of that stickiness off before you stick it onto your cardstock. So just play around with it and see what works. I think there's every batch is just a little bit different. All right, so now I have, oh, I guess I need to trim this down. Hopefully I used the right size. Yeah, I did. Okay, let me grab my paper trimmer. We're gonna trim this down a little bit. Okay. I think this is, okay, so we're going to need to trim it down to three and a half by four and three quarters. So three and a half. by four and three quarters. All right, we'll set that aside. And then we're gonna attach that to our layer of black. So that we just have a thin layer of black showing. And that's really gonna make that background pop off of our card base. And then our card base is gonna be a piece of a sweet sorbet. And I'll just pop that on there. And look how that background just pops off of that cardstock. Oh, I love it. I just love adding black to cards. I just think it looks so classy. All right. Okay, so now we need to work on our focal point. So I've gone ahead and I've done a couple things. Let me grab my dies here. All right. So first of all, I use the stylus shapes to cut a circle. And then I used some crumb cake cardstock to cut the cone. And look at this cone, look at the detail that that adds. It's got some texture on it. It's got a pattern on it. And then it's got score lines so that you can just fold along those score lines to create a fun little cone. Look at that. So cute. All right, and then the other thing I've done is I've taken this, so the ice cream, 
and I've cut it from Petal Pink and Sweet Sorbet, so our two colors of ice cream. And then I did this little guy for a little bit of chocolate sauce on the top. And then, oh, we need to stamp a cherry. So I've got a little scrap of white and we're gonna stamp a cherry. And then there is a little die that will cut that out. So this die right here, we'll cut that out. So I've gone ahead and done that. And we're gonna create a little waffle cone. All right, so on here, let's stamp our greeting first and then we can go ahead and start assembling. I'm gonna use some memento ink and I'm gonna use the greeting that says you're the cherry on top. And I'm gonna stamp it a little bit closer to the left on my circle. All right. Okay, now we're ready to start assembling. This piece is gonna go on using some dimensionals. Let me just grab, got a few little scraps left on this one. Uh, let's add one more on here. All right, good morning, Angela. Welcome. Hey, we're gonna pop this right on here. And I'm gonna go kind of, see how a lot of it joins right in the center here? I'm gonna kind of go in the center. I think this would be a really cool technique. Actually, just this thought just came to me. If you did kind of raise as well, that would be really cool. All right, so we've got that on there. And our cone, we'll use a mini glue dot to adhere our cone. Grab my paper piercing tool, pick off a mini glue dot. And I'm just gonna pop this on here like that and then close it up. That will hold our cone closed. Now we can add our ice cream. So I'm gonna start with this guy just put a little bit of adhesive on here like that and then this guy is going to go in on top just tuck it in and go down far enough so i can't see that straight line there i don't want to see the straight line on either of them okay there we go and then this will go on top of here like this. I'm gonna put it on top of the petal pink one. All right, and then this is gonna go on here like this. So I'm gonna use a dimensional off to the side here. And then just a little bit of multi-purpose glue balance it out. Look how cute this looks already. All right, and then I'm going to bring in a little mini dimensional and cut a little strip here because this is going to sit right on top of here, but I do want it to be a little bit more stable. So I'm just going to put a piece of a dimensional across and then a little bit of multi-purpose glue, and then we'll pop that right on top like that. So cute. And then of course we need to finish it off with a baker's twine bow. So I've got some white twine here that I've tied into a bow. And look how cute that card is. Love it. All right, so now we've got the inside and we've got a couple little scraps here. Let's see, let's see what we can do with these scraps. You know what, we're gonna do this. We're gonna add these little strips, why, why throw them out? We went to all that effort to create that fun pattern. 
Let's use them. So we'll do strip across here. Just make sure it's straight. And then we'll add this guy, leaving a little bit of space and kind of centering it. And then we'll trim these ends off. And then we can add this to the inside of our card. And you could turn this into a Valentine's card. So in the stamp set, there is a Be My Valentine. So you could stamp Be My Valentine. Uh, you could do Life is sweeter with you. You could do celebrate. You could use actually any of these ingredients on the inside of this card. I'll probably turn it into a birthday card. Super cute. And then what I did, because everybody got um, half, I believe it was half a package of the Subtles DSP. And so we did a lot of decorating of our envelope flaps. So I've got a piece of petal pink DSP here. We do the polka dots or the plaid? I don't know. What do you guys think? Polka dots or plaid? Either of them would work. I love the plaid pattern on this. What do you guys think? Let's see. It's going to take a bit for this to update. That's the thing when you ask questions on here. There's always like a little bit of a delay. All right. Okay, I'm not I'm not seeing anything. All right. We're going to go with Okay, here we go. Maureen says dots. We'll go with dots. She was the first one that I saw the response to. So we'll go with dots. Just going to line this up. And We'll trim this down. So if you guys enjoyed this card and you want to learn some more masking paper techniques, you can head on over to the Share Milkshake um, masking paper technique tutorial where you can purchase the tutorial. I've linked it in the description. Um, and if you're in Canada, I still have one more class kit the cost was $45 plus $5 shipping. And you get a package of masking paper and half a package of the DSP, as well as the four card kits. And then I'll email you the tutorial as well. All right, so the first person who responds that they would like that will get that um, as well. All right, so there we go. There is a fun ready form technique for you featuring masking paper and the share a milkshake bundle. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Have a great weekend guys. Take care.